Hello, and welcome back to The Sim. In this one, we're here on the ground in Greensboro with the H-Jet. And since the night sky is about to make its way in, we're going to jump inside and use the X-Touch to control the overhead lights. Continuing on with MIDI controllers, and specifically the X-Touch, we're going to look at mapping an overhead light using the slider. So as you can see here, we have full control of that cockpit overhead light and dimming it using the fader slider. So let's go ahead, jump over to SPAD next and show you how we set this up. Just a reminder as always, I'm currently on the alpha release channel, so, or build channel. So I'm on 091252, which means if the release hasn't come out of 0913 yet there's a good chance we're still in the alpha which means some of this stuff may not look the same if you want to be on the alpha you have to make sure to link your discord account to your license if you hop into the discord there's also the how to section which specifically shows you what to do to get on alpha okay moving on so what we want to do is look at our devices we're going to go to MIDI devices and we're going to make sure that it's enabled and we have input and output for X-Touch Mini. Now, you should have already done this if you watched the other X-Touch video, which explains even more with the things we're doing. Right now, we're focused on the slider and mapping it. So now we've done that, we come back to panels, we go to our X-Touch. The easiest way to figure out is you move it and that will show us. And we've covered this before, but the slider is on the A side on the uh, 10 channel dot nine for the command change. So what you're gonna see here is we already went ahead and we mapped this, but there was a way for us to figure it out. And that's the most important part with SPAD is how did we figure this out. It can work really well when you use two parts, the virtual cockpit and then the devices themselves. Under aircraft systems, under system controls, interior lights, there is this overhead cockpit and we have the control for it as we set it up. Note at the time of this video and the version of the H-Jet, the actual slider in this does not update from the data underneath, but we'll set it up so that after the fact, it will still work. Now to figure things out, what we did was we went to our add-on section. Here we have the data monitor. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to undock the data monitor, and I'm gonna bring it down here for us to see, and I'm gonna put it on the left-hand side. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go to the event monitor and we're going to undock it and we'll bring it back over and then we'll head back to our panel. So here we have the event monitor and we're going to hit the start button and right away I'm going to hit stop and you're going to wait. See there's a lot of events being constantly sent and set by the HJet and so now what we're going to do is we're going to cancel out all these noisy events so that they go away. So now when we resume it, so don't hit clear, because clear will start all over. So now things are nice and clean and slowly things will show up. We're going to come over here to our data monitor and we're going to add the LVARs. And again, at the top is a giant list of those LVARs and we can use the filter on last change on the column and it'll put the last change, so the most recent stuff, to the top. And so I generally like to come in and clear out all these noisy events that are constantly going. Down here, this kind of works like the event monitor in that anything that happens will update here. And of course, those values will update up here so we can also still toggle the change. So what I did was I came in and I pressed the cockpit overhead. And you'll notice by clicking on that LVAR, it sh or that button in the sim, it shows us the LVAR of HJet. 
Interior lights overhead, 0 to 1 when it turned on, 1 to 0 when it turned off. On the right hand side, you'll see that light potentiometer set went to 20, then back to 0. So potentiometer 11 is actually what's driving the light, and it's going to turn it on and off and set certain minimums. So here, as we turn this up, you'll notice it automatically turns the lights on. And this is controlling the light percentage potentiometer, and that value is here. And whenever these get set, it also sends a parameter, so 10, 19, so almost 20. So you're seeing that these values are basically rounded and sent to the light potentiometer. And it's constantly making sure that the panel lights is on and the cabin lights is set to one as well. Now, even though that's there, you'll see that we now can control the lights from that slider. So as we move the slider, they go up, they go down, and those controls are taking place. So if we cycle the last change, we will see those values going up and of course we're controlling the potentiometer directly with the slider. So there, we already know what it is we need to do because we use the data monitor to find which potentiometer, number 11, and which of the LVARs that we need to control. So the first thing we did was we came into our control change 10.9 and we added an event and we went to axi changed event. Now we know what these are because we got them from the data monitor and effectively what we need to do is change data. So the difference here is when we add an action is we're not sending a simulation event, we're changing a data value. So first, we can search the LVAR for the light underscore percent. You'll notice it's not percent, little spelling change mistake. But we saw that one. And it is a number, but it's expecting to be a percent, 0 to 100. So what we did was we selected that, and we set it instead of a set, an increment, a decrement, you'll notice because this is an axi, there's a bunch of extra events. Set event value, value inverted, set event value normalized, or set value normalized inverted, or the exact axi value, or translate that into percent. So we selected into percent. Now, we know that this control is not actually updating the screen, which is also not updating the JavaScript, which is also not then updating the actual potentiometer. So what we did to overcome that is we also changed data value, and then we went to the Microsoft stuff, and we looked for potentiometer, we looked for light potentiometer, 11, and we did the exact same thing. We wanted the axi as a percent. And if you notice, it even tells you it is a percent as the unit. We then hit OK, which I won't do because I already have it assigned. And you can see it's doing the same thing. Now that ensures that both the potentiometer simbar, which will make the light actually ramp up and down, is working and it makes sure to update that LVAR for the point when the HJet will move the slider in the right GTC. So it's prepared for us. Now what we also wanted to do was be able to trigger that little button that turns the LED on and off because it also has an LVAR. Now it's possible with the future percentage change that would also automatically turn on but I'm a little OCD and I like to control everything I can so in this case we went with a scripted event to do that we went to add event and you'll notice scripted event 
and we added one of those and it's going to tell you that this requires a condition something to follow along with to trigger that and since we know we want to actually use the device so when it's not at the zero value the bottom of the slider it will turn it on and off so to do that we went to add condition we went to select data and we went to local devices we scrolled down we found our X touch and then we went to control change 9 and so this became what it's following along with when any change happens we decided we want it to be when it's less than 1 that way when it goes to 0 it will turn off that LED lamp then we added the action we changed the data value and again we were looking for interior lights and it was the interior lights overhead that we found in our data monitor so we clicked OK and we want to set it to zero so when this gets less than one it's going to set that to zero and the green light will go off and of course this and this look identical so we're going to delete one of those for the second event we added another scripted event but on this one same device but when in range between a 1 and a 10 what we wanted to do then is to set the interior lights overhead to a 1 so we'll see that button light up green now it could have been 1 to 100 but I figured between 1 and 10 we're going to have set it at least one time for sure we probably could have done between one and two and it would have worked every time that'll about do it for this one we wanted to make it quick and focus specifically on the slider on the X touch if you haven't please hit that like button subscribe come along for the next one as always thanks for watching have a great day